premium cruise lines currently are the way that I love to cruise. Most of my friends, family, and clients agree. So I'm comparing the five leading premium options out of U.S. ports today on Seymour Seas. There are cruise lines out there for everyone, and the various market segments do a great job of targeting specific demographics. This video is going to break down the five leading cruise lines in the premium market. And make sure you stay tuned because I'm going to rank my personal favorites. Hello everyone and welcome. If you are new here, I am Doug and this is Seymour Seas, your cruise tips and planning channel where I hope to help you and your family pick, plan, and enjoy your next cruise vacation. If you do find this video helpful in any way, please do give it that thumbs up and consider subscribing if you have not done so already. Thanks so much and let's get started. Let's begin by talking about the four major market segments for cruises. The first is going to be the mass market segment. These are cruise lines that target families, groups of all ages. They're going to be the large mega ships. These are cruise lines like Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, Carnival, MSC, Costa. They're going to have lots of activities and lots of different options. The next is going to be the premium cruise line. That's the market that we're talking about today. These are going to be more traditional in nature, and these are going to be cruise lines like Celebrity, Holland America, Princess, Canard. The next is going to be the luxury segment. Now, these are going to be all-inclusive, very, very upscale cruise lines such as Regent Seven Seas, Silver Sea, Seabourn, Windstar, and many others. And then the fourth segment, I'm going to include here Expedition Cruising. These are going to be the very destination-specific, such as Celebrities, Ships in the Galapagos, or you've got Punat or National Geographic down in the Antarctic. And then you have Hurtengarden up in the Norwegian Fjords. I have a full video on the four market segments of cruising, so I'll leave the link to that in the comments below. As we look at the premium market a little closer, these are some of the things that you're going to find on most premium cruise lines. You're going to have a much higher level of food quality and food choices. You're also going to have a more traditional cruise experience, and you're also going to see a much higher level quality of service. The demographic is going to probably be a little bit older, more sophisticated, and more of a seasoned traveler. Things that you won't find on a premium cruise line will be things like the huge water parks and kids' splash zones like you'll find on Royal Caribbean, or the big amusement park type venues such as the go-kart racing on Norwegian or the roller coaster on Carnival. Surprisingly though, you are going to still find kids clubs, teens areas, as well as some pool parties, as well as outdoor movies and movies under the stars. The five cruise lines we'll be reviewing today are going to be Virgin Voyages, Princess Cruises, Hald America Line, Celebrity Cruises, and Cunard. Let's get started with the new kid on the block, Virgin Voyages. Virgin Voyages is a fresh addition to the premium cruise line segment. It is best known for being one of the few adults only cruises. It's very stylish, but edgy and adults oriented. It has three ships currently in service with one on order, and it was founded back in 2014, but their first ship did not launch until 2020. Each of the ships house about 2,700 passengers, so this is a mid to a mid-large size ship. The demographic on board is going to be average age about 35 to 40 years on up. You have to be at least 
18 years or older to sail with Virgin. And this is meant for fun-loving couples who are free-spirited, adventurous, and like that adult vibe, which is on board, but it's not in your face. In Virgin's base cruise fare, it includes your dining, your Wi-Fi, your tips, entertainment, workout classes, and your essential drinks. This is everything basically except your alcoholic drinks, which is extra. Now the dining on Virgin is what normally we would classify as specialty dining on other premium lines. So it has several different types of specialty restaurants for your main dining. When booking a suite on Virgin, you're going to have a complimentary daily bar tab, a bottomless in-room bar setup. You're going to also have premium Wi-Fi and access to a private lounge in Richard's rooftop. So one of the big pros for Virgin is going to be that you're going to have very few upcharges on your cruise. The other pros are going to be one that it is adults only and that the ships are medium to medium large sized and they do not feel crowded at all. Some of the cons on Virgin is one, there is no drink package. So there's no unlimited drinks. All of your cocktails, beers and wines are going to be charged to your on-room account. Also, the pool area on Virgin is quite small and that the actual area for swimming is only in a small part of the middle pool on the main deck. There is another small pool that's basically a glorified hot tub in the health and workout area. The storage in the staterooms has also been a problem and you may find for a longer cruise that storage is going to be at a minimum. There also is no buffet on Virgin Voyages. It is a food court style setup where you sit down and a server will go and get all of the different items that you're ordering off of several menus. Many people like this setup because they don't have to wait in line for the different stations. And there are several areas where you do have grab and go items. Virgin is best suited for adults of any age who are fun at heart, couples, and it's also very LGBT plus friendly. It is not suited for those that are looking for a very traditional cruise experience or those that are highly conservative by nature. The cruise critic reviews for Virgin Voyages is from the point of view of the editors, they give Virgin Voyages 5.0 points out of 5. From the cruise guest perspective, they give Virgin 4.1 out of 5, which is a very strong rating. Next up on our list is Princess Cruises. Princess has been known for decades for having very nice, upscale, beautiful ships. You'll know them as the Love Boat. Yes, that was the original Love Boat was from Princess Cruises. They have 15 ships currently in their fleet with two on order, and this is over three different class sizes. Princess was formed in 1965, and it is currently a premium brand owned by Carnival Corporation. Over those three classes of ships, the size of the ships hold anywhere from 2,400 passengers up to 3,600 passengers. The targeted demographic for Princess are going to be those experienced, seasoned, sophisticated travelers, normally in their 50s to upper 50s, and couples. The base cruise fare on Princess is going to consist of your standard items, such as your main dining room, the buffet, complimentary food items, and your teas, juices, and coffee. They do have an option called Princess Plus that is a more all-inclusive. It is an upcharge, but it will include a premium drink package, Wi-Fi, and prepaid gratuities. 
All specialty dining, specialty coffees without the drink package are all going to be at an added cost. When booking suites on Princess, you do not get a lot of additional benefits. You do get some concierge services, as well as some upgraded room service menus, as well as priority reservations. Some of the pros for Princess is going to be their outstanding customer service. They also have fantastic technology called the Medallion technology, which locates you anywhere on the ship. You can get a drink brought to you. You can get room service brought to you anywhere on the ship. And the Medallion uh, technology is always being updated and people really seem to enjoy it. Princess also excels in the Alaskan market. They have been in Alaska for many, many years and they do Alaska very well. Some of the reported cons for Princess is that a lot of their newer, larger ships are all identical. So there's little change. And if you've sailed on one of the Princess ships, they all seem to look alike. And although the dining on Princess is very good, most of the reports say that it is just a little bit above average and nothing spectacular. Princess is best suited for those that are couples in their late 50s to 60s, and it is not best suited for those that are families with young children or those that want an active experience. And for the cruise critic perspective, in the point of view of the editors, they give Princess Cruises 4.5 stars out of 5. And from a guest perspective, they give Princess 3.8. Moving on to the next cruise line, we have Holland America Line. Holland America is best known for their very traditional, old school type of cruising with their very beautiful ships, their teak promenade that goes all the way around and it is something that is extremely traditional. Holland America has 11 ships currently in service over four different classes of ship. This is also a premium brand that is owned by Carnival Corporation and it was first established and founded in 1873. They just recently celebrated their 150th anniversary. Over those four classes of ships, you have some small ships that hold around 1,400 passengers, and normally those are used for the grand longer voyages, and then some of their newer pinnacle class ships hold around 2,600 passengers. The demographic on board is going to be again in your late 50s on up. Many would say that the Age demographic is even higher on Holland America, and you definitely see the elderly love Holland America line. These cruisers are looking for that traditional experience where you have upscale dining, you have several different relaxing areas and libraries where you can sit, read a book. Their Crow's Nest is known for having lots of different board games as well as areas to play cards with fellow guests. Holland America was one of the first cruise lines to develop the Alaskan market, so they are very well established and have a lot of Alaskan and Alaskan land tours available for cruises. They also are well known for world cruises as well as grand voyages lasting more than 14, 28, and even over 100 days. The base cruise fare on Holland America Line is going to consist of your main dining, your buffet, and all of the complimentary food areas such as the pizza area as well as the burgers around the pool. They do have an all-inclusive option called Have It All, which does consist of your drink package, Wi-Fi, prepaid gratuities, as well as normally one specialty dining and an excursion credit. Booking suites on Holland America does not provide for a lot of extra perks, but they do have for Neptune suites and above, you do have a special lounge, which is the Neptune lounge, as well as Club Orange, which is a private dining room. The other suites, such as Vista Suites or Signature Suites, do not come with many extra benefits. The pros of Holland America is the exceptional upscale dining, the relaxing atmosphere, the upscale customer service, 
and on their newer Signature and Pinnacle class ships, you have something called Music Walk, which has been an upgraded music experience that has been now attracting a much younger demographic on those classes of ship. The cons for Holland America are obviously its older age demographic on board, and then associated with that, there are not a lot of very active things to do on the ship, such as sporting or other activities like that. Holland America is best suited for those in their late 50s or 60s on up, couples who want a very relaxing and very traditional cruise experience. It is not suited for couples that have small children or those that want an active cruise and are young at heart. The cruise critic ratings for Holland America are from an editor's point of view a 4.5 and from a cruiser guest point of view 3.9. Moving on to our next premium cruise line, and that is Celebrity Cruises. Celebrity is known for its modern, award-winning ship design, their wine program, upgraded dining, as well as the exceptional service you'll find on board. This premium cruise line is the premium brand from Royal Caribbean Group. They have 13 active ships in service with three different classes and three expedition ships in the Galapagos Islands. Celebrity was founded in 1988 as a Greek cruise line, which then Royal Caribbean purchased. Their ship sizes range from around 2,100 guests for Millennium Class, about 2,800 for Solstice, and then around 3,000 for the newer Edge Class ships. The demographics on board a celebrity ship, you're going to find those in their late 50s on up, mostly couples. However, there is going to be some families and some kids. Now, these are going to be of a demographic of a more seasoned, more sophisticated traveler. In the celebrity base fair, you're going to have your main dining room, your buffet, all of the complimentary food items, as well as your entertainment provided as part of that fair. Now, extras will be the specialty dining, the drink packages, Wi-Fi, as well as crew gratuities. They do have an all-included fair, which is somewhat inclusive. It does provide for a drink package as well as the basic Wi-Fi, both of which are upgradable, but the crew gratuities are still extra. If you book a suite on Celebrity, you will have your own suite's dining room as well as the premium drink package and premium Wi-Fi. Some of the biggest cons for Celebrity is going to be the entry price point. It's going to be probably the most expensive of the premium brands. And if you're not going with the all-included package, there are several different upcharges for most things like specialty dining, Wi-Fi, various drink packages, and others. Celebrity is best suited for those middle-aged or older couples, and it is also very LGBT plus friendly. Celebrity is not suited for those young couples looking for a party atmosphere or those travelers traveling with small children. Cruise critic ratings for Celebrity from an editor's point of view is five points out of five, and the cruiser guest experience has been rated at 4.1. And finally, let's now address Cunard. Cunard is a very, very traditional cruise line who has been around since 1840. Cunard is known for its very sophisticated, very traditional cruise experience. They have extremely elegant ships in service, which are three ships currently in service, with one additional coming in 2024. I should note that the Queen Mary II, one of their three active ships, is the only remaining true ocean liner at sea. As I stated, it was founded in 1840 and is yet another premium brand from the Carnival Corporation. Ship sizes range from around 
2,000 passengers up to 2,700 passengers, and then the new Queen Anne will be 3,000 passengers. The demographic on board Cunard is also going to be 60 plus. These are going to be mostly retired, wealthy, sophisticated travelers who love their black tie dining as well as the traditional ballroom dancing. Included in your Cunard cruise fare are going to be three different categories and classes of stateroom. Each of these classes will be separated with their own dining room and the highest level Queen's Grill will also have dining privileges as well as a few additional perks, but drink packages and Wi-Fi are still going to be extra. Some of the pros for Cunard is that it is a very luxurious cruise. It is extremely traditional and those that like the formal environment will absolutely love it. Also, the transatlantic crossing on the Queen Mary 2 is still extremely popular. Now, the cons for Cunard is that one, it may be too formal for many people. It may be too traditional for others, as well as the ships are much older and they are showing their age. This line is best suited for those that are retired, wealthy, and want that traditional formal experience. This is obviously not for the younger crowd, those that are looking for a more active cruise, as well as maybe a little bit more casual. For cruise critic ratings, from the editor's point of view, they give Cunard four points out of five, and the guest rating perspective gives Cunard 3.8. So if you made it this far or you've skipped ahead, as promised, I'm going to rank these five premium cruise lines. So with the number one rating, I have a tie. I have a tie between Virgin Voyages and Celebrity Cruise Lines. I did not give Virgin the number one spot by itself just because even though I love that all the things are included in their base fare, there's not a lot of upcharge, they still do have some issues with respect to the upper decks. I feel that there's a lot of wasted spaces on this ship as well as the pool areas are extremely small. I did not give Celebrity the number one spot by themselves just because even though everybody on this channel knows I'm a Celebrity fan, I love their modern vibe, the dining, I love the way the buffet is set up, I love the ships themselves and the design. One of the things that I did get from my last video is that there are several reports that the main dining room quality is on the decline. So the number one spot goes to Virgin Voyages and Celebrity Cruises. My number three rank for these premium cruise lines goes to Holland America Line. I really do love Holland America. I like their dining. I like their traditional but casual environment that you get on a Holland America ship. Now, with their introduction of Music Walk on their larger, newer ships, this is something that I have enjoyed quite a bit. And we go on the Rotterdam, our first Pinnacle class ship, here in a few weeks, and I'm looking forward to some of the additions like the Rolling Stone Rock Room. And in the fourth position, I'm going to give this to Cunard. This might surprise a few people on the channel, but I think that Cunard is a very well-established cruise line. Some of their ships are older and need some care, but that transatlantic crossing on the last true ocean liner, the Queen Mary II, is something that's been on my bucket list for quite some time. It does have that distinct separation of classes with those three different categories, and I think this is one of the reasons why it is not as popular as it used to be. The high level of service, the high level of dining is something that I think sets Cunard apart from many in the premium category. And in the fifth spot, I'm going to give this to Princess Cruises. Now, I have nothing against Princess. I believe that the ships are beautiful and that they have a high level of service. And I have not heard bad reports about their dining. However, Princess has never really given me a reason to cruise. 
And that is something that I still want to do. I want to experience Princess, but I see nothing on Princess that really sets them apart. I'm sure there's a lot of Princess fans out there, so please give me the reasons why you feel that Princess does not deserve the bottom spot in my premium list. Thanks everybody for watching, and when you are ready to book your next cruise on one of these premium lines, I would be so very honored to help you plan and book that next adventure. Please email me at the email address in the description below. If you found this video helpful in any way, please, as always, give it that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. I have lots of more content on the channel, so make sure you watch a couple of these videos next. Thanks again, and as always, I'll see you again soon.